Okay guys, we are on our last chapter of Phantom Tollbooth. Today is the last day that we will read it. It's bittersweet. We get to see the ending, the final ending, but of course we're finishing the book. I hope you guys loved it as much as I did. Um, and um, let me know how you felt about it, however you can. Um, this is one of my favorite books of all time, and I hope that you guys liked it. I definitely recommend rereading it um, later on. It's amazing the things that you um, pick up on that you never did when you reread it, especially as you get older. Every year I read it, there's something new that I picked up that I didn't get before, even though I've read this many, 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 many times since I was in, I think, sixth grade was when I first read it. Um, maybe fifth, I can't remember. Um, but go ahead and open your, re uh, not your reading journals, I'm sorry, your vocabulary notebooks to, um, we're adding these underneath chapter 19, so go ahead and um, draw a line underneath the words for chapter 19, and then go ahead and add chapter, oops, we forgot the title of the book, The Phantom Toll Booth. We underline the titles of, bu of books, chapter 20, which is called Goodbye and Hello. Now they do spell goodbye a different way than what we would, so, um, but we'll go ahead and write the way that they do. Goodbye, we would normally add an E, but they don't in this book. And hello, and then remember we have chapter titles and quotation marks. Okay, there are six words in this chapter. It's actually a pretty short chapter, but there are six new words that we will see. So let's see, one, two, three, four, five. We start with number six, and that word is withered. Withered, W-I-T-H-E-R-E-D. And withered is a verb. We can tell by that E-D that it's in past tense. And it means to decay. So the way that you might use that is you might say, um, let's see, my plant withered because I hadn't watered it in days. Number seven is frantically. Frantically. Spelled F-R-A-N-T-I-C-A-L-L-Y. And if you guessed it was an adverb because of that L-Y, you are correct. Oops, oh, the adverb. It's an adverb. And what it means is that something is done <clears throat> passionately or desperately. Passionately or desperately. <clears throat> So how I may use it in a sentence is I may say, he frantically did his homework that was due in an hour. Something like that, desperately, like super quick, trying to get it done, desperate to get it done in time. Okay, number eight is the word abruptly. abruptly. Again, if you guessed it was an adverb by that L-Y, you are correct. It's spelled A-B-R-U-P-T-L-Y. And it is another adverb. And it means something that is done. Oops, I almost wrote the same word. Suddenly. So in context, I might say, the band stopped playing abruptly when somebody came onto the stage who shouldn't have been there. 
That means they stopped all of a sudden, usually without warning. Okay, number nine is the word solitary. Solitary, S-O-L-I-T-A-R-Y. Solitary is an adjective. Remember, the difference between an adverb and an adjective is that an adverb describes a verb, so it says how something was done. An adjective describes a noun, so it just says something about that noun. And it means alone or without others. So in context, you might say, my mom was really lucky when she went to the grocery store because she saw one solitary package of toilet paper. It means it's all by itself. Number 10 is the word erratic, which is E-R-R-A-T-I-C, excuse me, and it is another adjective. <clears throat> and it means not expected or normal. So in context, you might say her behavior, let's see, her erratic behavior was caused by being stuck in the house all day, every day. You can see most of my sentences have a theme. Okay, and our very last phantom toll booth vocabulary word, number 11 is eagerly. We have that L-Y because it is another adverb. And it's spelled E-A-G-E-R-L-Y. And it means wanting to do something very much. So in context, I might say on Christmas morning, we eagerly opened our package, our pack, our presents, sorry. On Christmas morning, we eagerly opened our presents. Okay, that was the end of our vocabulary for Phantom Toll Booth, go ahead and put your vocabulary notebook away. Make sure that you are listening for all of these words as we read together. Um, and then go ahead, open your Phantom Toll Booth book to chapter 20, Goodbye and Hello. Chapter 20, Goodbye and Hello. As the pleasant countryside flashed by and the wind whistled a tune on the windshield, it suddenly occurred to Milo that he must have been gone for several weeks. I do hope no one's been worried, he thought, urging the car on faster. I've never been away this long before. The late afternoon sun had turned now from a vivid yellow to a warm, lazy orange, and it seemed almost as tired as he was. The road raced ahead in a series of gentle curves that began to look familiar, and off in the distance, the solitary toll booth appeared, a welcome sight indeed. In a few minutes, he reached the end of his journey, deposited his coin, and drove through. And almost before realizing it, he was sitting in the middle of his own room again. It's only six o'clock, he observed with a yawn. And then, in a moment, he made an even more interesting discovery. And it's still today! I've been gone for only an hour, he cried in amazement, for he'd certainly never realized how much he could do in so short a time. Milo was much too tired to talk and almost too tired for dinner. So without a murmur, he went off to bed as soon as he could. He pulled the covers around him, took a last look at his room, which somehow seemed very different than he'd remembered, and then drifted off into a deep and welcome sleep. School went very quickly the next day, but not quickly enough, for Milo's head was full of plans and his eyes could see nothing but the toll booth and what lay beyond. He waited impatiently for the end of class, and when the time finally came, his feet, raced, his feet raced his thoughts all the way back to the house. Another trip, another trip, I'll leave right away. They'll all be so glad to see me, and I'll... 
He stopped abruptly as at the door of his room. For where the toll booth had been just the night before, there was now nothing at all. He searched frantically throughout the apartment, but it had vanished just as mysteriously as it had come. And in its place was another bright blue envelope, which was addressed simply for Milo, who now knows the way. He opened it quickly and read, Dear Milo, you have now completed your trip courtesy of the phantom toll booth. We trust that everything has been satisfactory and hope you understand why we had to come and collect it. You see, there are so many other boys and girls waiting to use it too. It's true that there are many lands you've still to visit, some of which are not even on the map, and wonderful things to see that no one has yet imagined. But we're quite sure that if you really want to, you'll find a way to reach them all by yourself. Yours truly, the signature, was, the signature was blurred and couldn't be read. Milo walked sadly to the window and squeezed himself into one corner of the large armchair. He felt very lonely and desolate as his thoughts turned far away to the foolish, lovable bug, to the comforting assurance of talk standing next to him, to the erratic, excitable din, to little Alec, who he hoped would someday reach the ground, to rhyme and reason without whom wisdom withered and to the many, many others he would remember always. And yet, even as he thought of all these things, he noticed somehow that the sky was a lovely shade of blue and that one cloud had the shape of a sailing ship. The tips of the trees held pale young buds and the leaves were a, deep, a rich, deep green. Outside the window, there was so much to see and hear and touch, walks to take, hills to climb, caterpillars to watch as they strolled through the garden. There were voices to hear and conversations to listen to and wonder and the special smell of each day. And in the very room in which he sat, there were books that could take you anywhere and things to invent and make and build and break and all the puzzle and excitement of everything he didn't know. Music to play, songs to sing and worlds to imagine and then someday make real. His thoughts started eagerly about, eagerly about as everything looked new and worth trying. Well, I would like to make another trip, he said, jumping to his feet. But I really don't know when I'll have the time. There's just so much to do right here. The end. I hope you enjoyed this book as much as I loved it. And I hope that one day you'll pick it up and you'll read it again. Because you'll learn so much more every time you read it. And like I said earlier, every time I read it. I find out something, I see something that I never noticed before. Okay, go ahead and get out your reading journal and open to a clean page. Okay, at the top of your clean page, you should have the title of the book, The Phantom Tollbooth, Chapter 20, Goodbye and Hello, and Today's Day. This is your last Phantom Tollbooth journey, I mean journal, <laughs> I read that word. Okay, number one, when Milo's journey is over, he deposits a coin in the toll booth. Where does he end up? How long has he been gone? How does everyone react to him being there? So this is um, talking about the end, of course, not the beginning. Remember, you only have to write what is underlined in red. Okay, number two. Why is Milo so excited to go home after school? Why does he end up disappointed? Number three. Milo finds a note at home. Explain what the note says. What does he suddenly realize while looking out the window? So that's a three-part question. What, is, um, what does the note say? And, or I'm sorry, two parts. And then, what does Milo suddenly realize after reading the note while he's looking out the window? Then number four, compare and contrast Milo at the beginning of the book to Milo at the end of the book. What lesson has he learned? So remember, compare and contrast says what is alike about Milo at the beginning and the end and what is different about Milo at the beginning and the end. And then make sure that you say what Milo has learned. And then number five, tell whether the following statements are true or false. So remember, you just write number five and then tell whether the following statements are true or false. And then you put, you um, indicate however you want to to show that uh, these statements are true or false. Milo is unable to read the signature on the note. Milo gets lost on his way home. Milo's family is extremely worried about him. Milo goes through the toll booth to another unknown land. 
and the phantom toll booth will go to the other board children or will go to other board children next. Okay, so go ahead, answer those questions in your journal. Remember, you need to answer at least three. If you want to answer more, you can. You need at least two complete sentences and um, watch your grammar, watch your sentence structure, watch your grammar, anything we've learned up to this point, I will be looking at. If you'd like to use your English journal or your English notebook to help you out, go right ahead. Once you're done with that, you do have homework. Um, it's in today's packet, the Monday packet. I reprinted it and put it in there. Uh, make sure to follow to do all of it. Remember, you only have to do one a little extra. You can do both. You will get some extra points, but you only have to do one. I don't have it with me in my hands right now. I'm sorry. And I can't remember if you have to write full sentences. If you do have to write out full sentences, make sure that you um, write enough detail so that the person reading, me, knows that you know what the word means. You know what I mean? You can't just say um, the, you, you just have to show that you know what it means. Okay, if you have any questions about um, today's reading lesson, uh, FaceTime me, Skype me, anything between 1 and 5 this afternoon.